Because I remember telling my friends, because they would be like, you know, how do you hear God? And I'll be like, yo, do you remember? Do you know, like, when you're YouTube, what up? It's your boy, Rudy Anthony, and I'm back with another video. Today, we are talking about how to hear God's voice better. That's right, we talking about how to hear God's voice better. Now, I want y'all to know, this ain't gonna be no super spiritual, churchy video. I am gonna throw a couple scriptures up there just to help those who might wanna see just a little bit more from the Bible. But this is gonna be more of a, more of a personal thing, more of a, more of something that I learned, right? On how to hear God's voice better. But I truly believe this is a general thing as well. This isn't something that's just, specific because I know what I'm about to say and the way that I'm going to reference how we hear God's voice is going to be very relatable to you as well. So during my relationship with God, right, when I was getting closer to God, actually, let me go back a little bit. When I first opened up the Bible, I actually opened it up with the Bible plans. This was probably like in 2009, 2010, right? Around 2010, I actually started to open up the Bible app. And that is where I actually started to look in Bible plans, right? Uh, the reason why I actually started to go into that Bible is because I was going through so much in my life, right? Like I was just fighting so many battles, right? I guess fighting my demons too, right? And and so many things was being said to me, right? Like, like anything somebody said to me, if they thought something was wrong with me, if they had a little smart remark or if they was like, Rudy, you got this issue or Rudy, this is going on with you. Like, I would just sit there because I'm such an analyzer, right? I'm always thinking day in and day out, and I'm trying to figure things, right? Like, I'm always digging deep into something to find the truth out of it for the reason why I got this passion for God. But I'm always looking for the truth in something. So just because something is said, I don't always truly just believe it. I want to find out if it's really true. So, of course, I got my relationship with God. I'm not really heavy in my relationship with God at the time. But, you know, my grandma always said she was praying for me. And at times when I would be struggling very hard, I'll be screaming out for God. Like, yo, God, help me. Help me get me out of this. So, you know, I'm going through a very hard time during this time. And I just, I don't, I don't even know if it came from anyone or if I seen the, the, the Bible app just in my phone in the app store one day. I can't even remember. But I think this is when the Bible app first launched around that time, like 2009, 2010, maybe before that. But I know... When I was going through all of this, I would go to the Bible app and look in the Bible plans and I would research or I would look at the plans and read those plans of what was said to me, like, Rudy, you have this issue. Or I would look at things about being angry or insecurity or telling lies, right? I wanted to see what God said about telling lies or something about sex or anything, right? I would go into those Bible plans and search those words and look at those specific messages in the Bible plan. And it would also show me the Bible verses. So during this time, I'm learning the Bible and then uh, it's pulling me in, right? Because I'm starting to see a little bit more of, I guess, myself, but also God, right? Because he's the one who's teaching me these, these certain things that I'm learning, right? So, you know, the years go by and I keep hearing God a little bit as time is going. I'm not, I'm still not this close to him yet, right? I still don't know much, but I know just the little things that I read, right? So now I'm, I'm picking up momentum in my relationship with God, right? Me and my daughter's mom break up in 2013 and now I'm opening up the Bible. Like I'm, I'm literally opening up the Bible and my grandmother had gave me her Bible during that time, but I'm opening up the Bible. I'm starting to read it for myself. Now I'm jumping in Proverbs, right? I'm, I think that was the first book that I ever read, Proverbs. I started it off with because I knew that was the book of wisdom and I always want wisdom. Plus it was easier to read to me. I just thought it was real easy to read. So I'm reading all of these scriptures, gaining all of this information. I'm also trying to move to different scriptures. Now I'm going to church. Now I'm in Bible study, right? And I'm praying. I'm praying more. I even remember I started to, to to challenge myself to pray every day. I was struggling like, yo, I know I could pray every day. I know I could pray every day. What I got to do, right? What I got to do. And I remember a scripture that I read before saying, do not lean on your own understanding, right? It's funny how I remembered that 
but I, I, I wasn't reading it at the moment. It's almost like I heard God telling me, you want to do this? Then why are you trying to do it in your own strength? Why are you trying to do this with what you think you should do? With your own understanding, why are you trying to do it through yourself? I need you to ask me, right? Because if I'm trying to do it on my own, then I'm not going to him, right? I'm trying to figure it out in my own way. I'm not going to him. I'm not asking him for it. So I remember, I remember this like yesterday. I prayed. I said, Lord, give me a, please forgive me, Lord God, for not coming to you. And I know that you said, don't lean on my own understanding. So I ask that you please take away my understanding and bless me with your understanding, Lord God. Please bless me with your strength, Lord God. Please help me with this thing that's hard for me to do, Lord God. I really want to pray every single day, every morning and every night. And it's very hard for me, Lord. Please help me with that. I need you to help me with it because I can't do it for myself. And you told me that I need to come to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Right? It was something like that. That's the kind of prayer that I prayed. It was more like, Lord, I know I'm trying to do this by myself, but you told me don't do it by myself. I remember that. So please help me. Funny thing is, is I started to do that prayer. After that, I was praying every day, every single day. But before that day, I was not. Every day, morning and night, still do it to this day. Right. But my point is, is I heard God. So what I know and I started to learn is the more I started to study the Bible, the more I started to be around people who actually wanted this relationship with God, the more I heard him, the more I heard his voice. Because the more I studied him, the more I learned who he was. I learned who he was. I learned his thoughts. I learned how he felt about things. I learned what he hated. I learned what he loved. I learned what he wanted me to do. I learned what he didn't want me to do. I learned what good was to him. And I learned what bad was to him. I learned what evil was and I learned what love was. I learned who he was and I also was learning who I was, right? Now, I want to connect this. What I also connected to this in my life was, because I remember telling my friends, because they would be like, you know, how do you hear God? And I'll be like, yo, do you remember? Do you know, like, when you're, you know someone and you know them well, right? Like your mom and your dad, your brother, your sister, maybe even your best friend, Right. You know, this person like let's say, just example, you know, your mom and your dad, they don't want you being out late at night at 10 or 12. Or, you know, your mom and your dad don't want you dressing a certain way or don't want you spending a certain amount of money. Right. So guess what? When you go to the store, you remembered and you can even hear as you're like, just imagine. And I know y'all been through this, too. You be in the store and you be like, I wonder if I should get this. But you remember your mom and your dad saying, don't get that. You should not do that. Or you, you out with your friends doing something that you shouldn't be doing right at a young age, at a club, at a party or whatever it is that you're doing. And you remember for some reason, as this event comes up, you remember that they said not to do it. It's like it comes to your ear, right? Why is that? That's because you know them. You know how they feel about it. You know what they would like from you. You know what they told you to do. Right. It's so funny how you hear them in your ear when they're not even there. Right. You remember that very thing. You can hear them. Just think about it. Some of your close friends now, they're telling you not to date that person, not to date that girl, not to date that guy. Person is not good for you or you shouldn't be doing something or you know what? You should probably try something else. And then when something c comes up, you remember what they said before that even came up. You wasn't even thinking about it. But for some reason, when it showed up. You heard them, you heard that person's voice in your ear saying that. And this is the exact same thing with God. When you learn God, when you stay in that Bible, when all you want is him, right? Because you know that he loves you so much. All you want to do is learn him. You want to know what he wants from you. You don't want to, you don't want to disappoint him no more because you learned so much about him. You know how much he loves you. You know how much he wants to protect you. You want to remember what he says. And that's the reason why he tells us to meditate on his word day and night so we can know him, so that we can follow everything, so that the spirit, the spirit can convict us. The spirit can check us. The spirit can nudge you, right, to remind you or to help you, right? I want to bring up some scriptures to this as well. One scripture is John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Another scripture is Romans 10, 17. That says, so faith comes from hearing 
and hearing through the word of Christ. Here's the last scripture, Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left. That's crazy, right? And that last scripture says, you'll hear it in your ear. That's funny. It's so crazy, right? And this is exactly what I learned in my life. This is exactly what I went through. It was the exact same thing. Just like I remember in my life when my grandfather used to tell me all of this stuff. And I would just be, I guess I thought I knew what I was going to, I wanted to do on my own, right? The same thing we do to God. We want to do whatever we want. And my grandfather would be like, nah, don't do this. Don't do that. He was trying to protect me, right? But he would always say, you think, you think you know everything because you young or whatever. He was like, you going to learn though. And then all of a sudden, I remember being in college and I'm like, yo, everything my grandfather said was true because all these events that would pop up really start to show up. Everything he was trying to teach me really started to show in my life. And it's crazy. And I'm sure God did that for a reason because my, my grandfather is a God-fearing man. But God is the same way. We are over here and our flesh, always trying to move on our flesh, always trying to do what we want. But the scriptures are there to teach us right? Not just to teach us, but to speak to us. And then after we listen, it's to speak through us, right? So that we can give it to others, so that it can stay in their spirit, right? So that so that we can plant the seed so that God can water it, therefore that they can hear him in their ears as well. So I wanted to say this is a great way to hear God's word better. But the thing is, is that you got to really dig in the scripture. You have to really go after him. You have to really want him, right? And I want y'all to know, when it comes to God, he wants what you want. Let me repeat that. He wants what you want, and he will not move until you give it to him. If you choose your flesh, he will allow you to, right? He will nudge you, but he will allow you to make that choice. This is why we have free will. But the word is there for us to dig into so that we can hear him. So when we hear him, Right. When we hear him instead of hearing the devil, because it, it's, it's like the little thing in the, in the cartoons and in the movies. Right. You got the, the angel and you got the, the demon. Right. You got God and you got the devil speaking to you when events pop up, when situations happen to your life. Right. The angel is like, you should do it this way. The devil is like, no, no, you should do it this way. Why you won't let them do that to you? How you gonna let them do that to you? They should never do that. You should get them back. When the angel's over there, like, no, let it go, let it go, give them love, give them grace, forgive them, right? You got two choices. You got two choices, flesh and spirit, God and the enemy. And this is how God speaks to us through the spirit. But we got to dig in the scriptures so that we can remember him, so that we can learn him, so that we can understand who he is. A lot of times, a lot of times, we don't have to be like, I'm going to pray about it. A lot of times we do, but a lot of times we don't. When we read that scripture, we'll learn him. Again, we will learn what he hates, what he loves, what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do, right? Or if we don't stay in the scripture, then our emotions, flesh, and perception of the world is going to leak out and it's going to speak to us. And we're going to move off of what the world says because that's the only knowledge we have. Jesus came to give us understanding. He came to fill us with the truth. The world lies to us, man. God wants to protect us and help us. So this right here is a great way to learn God and to hear his voice in a better way. The key is, is that you just have to learn the difference between your flesh and your spirit. Then you will understand when you hear God, you will understand when you can see things, when you can see things or signs showing up in your life, you'll, you'll know the difference because the son does whatever the father does, right? Because we hear God, we know his voice. Therefore, we know if he's saying this or if he's not, we should know if it's us or if it's him. And we can learn that and it could be a better way, but we got to remove ourselves. We got to remove our selfish, sinful, fleshy ways, mindset, actions, everything. We got to put that to the side so we can see his side and so that we can allow him to lead us in his way. So I hope y'all took something from this. I want y'all to know this is true. This is a very true thing. I know y'all understand because I know y'all be hearing people's voices or whatever it is that they said to you in your ear when situations happen. And I know you hear God, especially if you're being asked to me. I know you hear God in that. And that's the same way to hear him in everything. But the key is 
studying his Bible. That's how you learn him. That's how you stay close to him. That's how you run after him. You continuously talk to him and he will show up and learn who he is so that you can hear what he's saying. I want to thank y'all for watching this video. I ask that y'all please comment in the um, comment box. Let me know how y'all feel about this video. Let me know if you went through this. Let me know if you understand this. Let me know if you did or try to figure this out after and what has happened in your life of when you heard God or when you thought you heard of God. But um, until then, I ask that y'all like, share, and subscribe. Please hit the, the bell notification so that y'all can get my videos when I drop them. Because again, I'm coming with more heat. I love y'all and I'm going to get at y'all when I get at y'all.